Hello guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Welcome back to the Trans Atheist Podcast with your host, Ariane. So this is a somewhat unplanned uh, podcast. I do have some, some subjects down uh, to try to cover in future podcasts, but in this case, this one was just something that kind of came to me. So I live in um, northwestern Ohio. We live in a very, very conservative area. Uh, pretty right-wing leaning. Just um, a short while ago, the local area, the local pro-life organization, as they like to call themselves, had a celebratory gathering on the courthouse steps to celebrate the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Now, naturally, we also have a smaller but very vocal group of more progressive-minded people, and they were there to counter-protest. In the process of that, if you've seen any of the uh, protest signs, uh, there are some very, very funny ones. Uh, one of my personal favorites was the one that says, if I wanted the government in my P-U-S-S-Y, I would F a politician. Uh, so all of this they found incredibly offensive that they had to see signs with vulgar language and people flip them the bird and, and that was so incredibly offensive. Apparently, you know, that's more offensive than attempting to take away the civil rights of more than half the American population. So, um... I was kind of looking through. They even created their own little Facebook group uh, for their ilk. Um, and a lot of people were posting videos of the protesters on there because they're trying to create some sort of outrage uh, based on this. So um, just kind of looking through. And if it takes me just a moment, I'm kind of working on Facebook uh, to find some of these things as I go through. Um, this is why you probably should prep beforehand, but, uh, you know, I don't, I didn't. Um, but, uh, so one of the people that was there was the local president of our, of the particular town's town council, whose family member, I can't remember if it's the, um, sister or sister-in-law, I believe it's the sister-in-law, is trying to run for Ohio, um, the Ohio State Representative. Um, so it's kind of ridiculous. But anyway, um, he was one of the people there at the protest. And of course, he had a statement on everything. So I'm going to read you a little bit of this and we'll talk about this. So he puts in quotation marks, tolerance and accepting people despite their views slash beliefs. The mantra of the liberal left, however, they don't practice what they preach. Evidence? Protesters at a pro-life celebration rally tonight at our courthouse with vulgar signs and shouting while the speakers address the crowd. Imagine the outrage if anybody protested the Pride event this weekend and tried to shout over each of their speakers. Blindness and hate accusations are meaningless from their side unless they denounce such actions. Change my mind. Okay, so let's start there. Uh, number one, you're not going to change his mind because changing a mind first involves having a functional one. And he has left his on the altar of ignorance, bigotry, and fairy tales. But, to go into this, so, tolerance. Okay, let me just clarify. I know that that was a big phrase for things during the 90s and even the 2000s. I am not asking for your quote-unquote tolerance. If that's what we're looking for, then we are starting at a really low damn bar. You tolerate a fly buzzing around your face. You don't tolerate 
another human's existence, another human's civil rights, another human's in equality. You don't tolerate that. And as for we don't practice tolerance, okay, we did practice tolerance. Everyone that was there, I was not able to be at the protest. I wish I had been. And to those of you who were there, I apologize that I didn't make it. I wish I'd called off work just to come in. But the fact that, you know, you're free, you live in a free society to a degree, you get to go out there and you get to say what you want to say and we get to say what we want to say. That is tolerance. No one attacked you. No one was physical against you. We just, some of our people might have used potty language that you find offensive. And in the great scheme of things, if what you find more offensive, if you find the word fuck more offensive than taking away the rights of women and pregnant people, if you find that more, the word more offensive than the absolute barrage of anti-LGBT attacks and rhetoric that you not only preach in your churches every Sunday, Wednesday, and whatever other day of the week you have services, but that you also advocate for in politics to put your religious bullshit into our laws. If you find that to be less offensive than someone using a four-letter word, buddy, you got a damn problem. So, yes, I will happily scream over any protester. I got no problem telling a conservative, fuck you. As a matter of fact, I think we should make it a national holiday. National tell a right-winger to fuck off day. I'm perfectly good with that. And as for protesting at the Pride event, trying to make that comparison, so let's look at the difference. The Pride event is about expanding civil rights. It is about making sure that the scope of people that we decide should be equal under the law and have all the same rights and privileges and responsibilities gets larger. What they are talking about is literally taking away rights that a group currently already had in order to put them in a type of servitude, an incubator. So there is a vast difference. We are fighting for something, for the expansion of something, for the expanding of equality and civil rights. They are fighting for a shrinking demographic of people who want to enforce their religious bullshit on American society, regardless of whether we share that particular bullshit view. Now, going back to the group and some of the things that were posted, what I found really interesting is not only did this group decide that they wanted to get involved in the, you know, pro-force birth movement, but they also can't resist the opportunity to jump in on the LGBT community, particularly trans people. So in a small town that is predominantly conservative, it is not all that surprising that when you see a progressive cause, you're going to see common faces. Because we tend to be progressive on more issues than just one. And you know, small town, so our faces are going to be kind of easier to pick out in a crowd. You're going to interact with us more. So one of these people posted in the group and said, some of these signs are absolutely disgusting and repulsive. Name removed said the kid who made one of the red signs was bragging about it on social media. Now here we go, guys. A girl who thinks she's a boy made it. Such a lost and deceived group. Literally in a discussion on abortion, they cannot help themselves but to still go right to attacking trans people. Now the other one is a personal favorite of mine, one that I've had interactions with in the past. I don't re reveal names on here generally, 
Uh, there may be some occasion, if it's an elected leader, that I will do so. Um, but, so this person is a retired school teacher, a hardcore right-winger, anti-choice, anti-LGBTQ, um, anti-union. She was even against, from what I've heard from other teachers that served with her, she was even very critical of the teachers union because she found them to be too liberal. So, um, so she posted in this little group for the whiny bitches that were part of the pro-life, pro-force birth group. And um, thanks the pastor who did this, but I, I need to let me back up a little bit and give you a little bit of uh, background story. So this person... Um, was actually uh, in 2021 when we had our Pride event locally. We had a group of protesters, so to speak, that showed up from a particular religious group. They acted as if they were doing a survey. They even took the logo of the organization that had put together this event and slapped it on the top of their survey to make it look official. They were a right-wing Christian group basically going through trying to get people, LGBT people and supporters, information, and specifically kind of trying to guilt trip them. Now, among those people was this particular woman that we're talking about, this handmaid. I interacted with her. As a matter of fact, that was one of the photos that came out. Me down there dealing with some bigoted old lady. Um, she definitely, um, in the great scheme of assholery, she kind of takes it to a new level. Um, so it was very unsurprising, uh, to see her in this list. So, um, in, you know, in addition to this, um, she says, now I don't, I can't confirm any of this. I was not there, but, you know. Um, she says that our local newspaper apparently didn't notice talking about the horrible vulgarity that took place, nor did they report how one individual opened a Bible, threw it to the ground, and stomped on it to the approval of the LGBTQ++ group of protesters. Okay, so a couple of problems there. Number one, I don't know that that happened. These people are not exactly known for their honesty, especially this local little cult. But, I don't give a shit if they stomped on a book that you can literally pick up at the Barnes & Noble or you can get out of the nightstand of the hotel that you are screwing your hooker at. It's not really all that important to me. Um, so what the hell does it matter? But then it says, to the approval of the LGBTQ++ group of protesters. Okay, I feel rather certain having seen some of the videos of the people there. Number one, saying that that was an LGBTQ plus group. Um, the fact that there are some LGBT people that were in that group does not make it an LGBT group. There are also a lot of straight people, a lot of cis people. So that's just kind of a stupid thing. Um, also talks about the protesters who were sending pro-life people the middle finger numerous times. So the hell what? It's a digit on your hand. I mean, amazingly, I have four others that are rather similar. Well, at least three others. I mean, the thumb's a little dissimilar. Uh, it's not that big of a damn deal. Um, and trying to say that the pastor got threatening emails and all this. Um, then she says, did the protesters who opposed our well-attended pro-life celebration realize that a couple dozen of us had prayed for their safety and ours two days before? All right, so you prayed. Number one, big damn deal. You stood in around the circle and talked to yourself. I'm so thankful. Gee, you made a difference in my day. But number one, these are not the type of people who pray for you in a sincere way. I was actually talking with someone today about this. You know, even as someone who is an atheist, 
I'm not personally offended if something happens in my life and someone says they're praying for me. You know, we recently lost our 50 plus year old uh, parrot who was, who I was super close to, was my baby girl. I posted about it that we had lost her. I had a lot of people saying, you know, praying for you, all that. Did not upset me because I knew what their intention was. Their intention was basically saying, you know, I care. That's what that statement meant in that context. But that is not the context of these people. When they pray for you, they're praying for you because you're an evil, vile creature condemned to hell. So I don't really give a shit about their prayer. Uh, but what I really found interesting is that in the process of this, in a whole lot of bullshit that she posts on here, she then goes in um, to... <laughs> says, and regarding those who were there representing the pride, in parentheses, or not in parentheses, in quotation marks, LGBTQ++ movement, isn't it time that the morbid results and facts of people having their genitals mutilated and cut off and the effect of transitioning drugs, that this information finally comes out? I have pity for these people who have been so confused and perhaps very emotionally distraught in the past. Okay, so lady, take your pity and all your concern, wad it up in a nice tight little ball, and shove it up your ass. Okay, I don't need your pity, I don't need your concern, I don't give a rat's ass about any of it. You went on an abortion debate and decided to make it about trans people. So here's a little shocker for you. No one is getting their genitals mutilated or cut off. Is that how she put it? Cut off? Yeah, cut off. So a little bit of info for you, since you're too damn stupid to look it up yourself. They don't cut them off for gender confirmation surgery, honey. They kind of need the raw material for what they're creating. If they cut it off, you'd look like a Ken, and a, bar a Ken or a Barbie doll. That's not exactly the desired result. Number two, we are fully informed when we make that decision. You know, as far as like confusion and all this stuff that they like to throw in and emotionally distraught. So, um, no... Just because you're confused doesn't mean that we are. We go through a lot of steps and processes in order to be able, even an adult, goes through lots of steps and processes in order to be able to get gender confirmation surgery. You do not simply walk into a doctor's office and say, hey doc, can you turn me from an Audi to an Innie? Doesn't quite work that way. You have to deal with therapists, psychologists, you have to be on, you know, hormones all this time for a set period of time you got to get letters from this person and that person you know it's like even going with you know four years ago i had breast augmentation now if a cis woman wants breast augmentation she walks into a plastic surgeon and if she slaps the money on the table honey you got boobs but me because i'm a trans person i walk in have the money and yet, I have to get a letter from a therapist saying it's okay. I got to get a permission slip. Talk about, you know, infantilizing someone. But that's neither here nor there for this point. As for the, how does she put it, transitioning drugs. First of all, the transitioning drugs are just hormones. I mean, generally, there's a T blocker in there. That, that's used in the United States. It's primarily uh, spironolactone that's used in that case. Um, there's a better one that's available in Great Britain, but um, for whatever reason, the assholes at the FDA won't approve it here in the United States, so there we go. But um, talking about the, um, the effects of transitioning, so, with these, with these transitioning drugs, the effect is exactly what we're looking for. The effect of transitioning drugs of my hormones was I started growing boobs. And you know what? That was kind of what I was going for, honey. 
and as for your fascination with people's genitals, if you are not being invited to be in any way, shape, or form a part of my genitals, how about you don't fucking worry about it? It's none of your business what I've got below the belt, above the belt, I know what you've got above the earlobes, not a damn thing. But it is none of your business what we have. But the reason they're fascinated and they can't help in every situation but to bring up trans people is because it is part, and gay people for that matter, it is part of the repressive bullshit of their religious cult. See, they have a sex negative culture that they have instilled within their people. Sex is a dirty thing. It's a thing that, you know, anything related to the genital region is only for when you're producing a baby, and that's it. Um, it is, you know, and everything else is evil, vile, and sinful. That is where a lot of this comes from, that and a whole lot of misogyny and patriarchy that comes into play. Uh, so, you know, they can't, manage to do anything without bringing it back to trans people because they are fascinated. They are terrified by the fact that we refuse to live life by their rules. We are their unreachables. See, they look at everyone else and they see behaviors that they think they have to change. You know, they got to save you so, if you're gay, if they can stop you from screwing other people of the same gender, we gotcha. If you're a drinker, well, we just gotta stop them from drinking alcohol. If you're a fornicator, we just gotta stop them from having sex outside of marriage. But trans people, we physically, under some circumstances, physically change our bodies. So, they see us as like, oh my goodness, if we don't catch them... Before they've had all that stuff done, we're never going to get them. Bitch good. We don't want your ass. So anyway, the whole thing is hilarious. Kind of pointing back to the uh, president of the town council's thing about how and asking for, um, you know, the liberals, the, what did he, did he call it? Yeah, we're the liberal left. As a side note, I don't really consider myself a liberal. I consider myself more of a progressive, but eh, fine, liberal's okay too. Um, to denounce these actions at the event, allow me to say emphatically, fuck you no. Not denouncing a single solitary thing. People are pissed off because you've given them good reason to be pissed off. You're attacking civil rights right and left. You're attacking human rights. You're attacking the rights of people's reproductive health. Shit, you're attacking health care in general for gay people, for LGB, the whole LGBT community, for trans people, especially when you want to ban people from trans-affirming health care, for women who in many cases in this country could die from things like an entopic pregnancy that some states are actually forbidding people from actually doing anything about. You get an entopic pregnancy, their whole idea to you is, well, guess God wanted it that way. Guess you're going to die. Um, so they don't give a shit about life. They care about forced pro-birth. If they actually cared about life, they would be wanting to expand social safety net programs. They'd be wanting to make sure that that poor mama that wasn't planning on having a kid is able to provide for that child and that the child is able to make sure they have good food and a quality education and, you know, a comfortable, appropriate housing situation and that they're not in the type of economic world that we've created with this oligarchy to where being born into that situation will mean a lifetime of poverty and struggle for them. If they truly were pro-life, they would be fixing that. They would be going for the expansion of health care, universal health care, because after all, we have a lot of things that kill children as well as adults. You know, why don't you want health care, universal health care, so that we can deal with things like childhood diabetes, which is a horrible disease that unfortunately kills a lot of kids or otherwise maims them, you know. 
Why aren't we looking at that? Because they don't care. Because just like with rape and other things related to that, it is not about the actual act. So rape is very seldom about sex. It's mostly about power and control. Abortion bans are very seldom, if ever, about life. They're about power and control. They want to control. They want to institute their religious dictates as our law. Whether we believe in their bullshit or not, that is their goal. That is why we fight. That is why we protest. That is why we sure as hell vote. That is why we hold our candidates accountable. We do, and that, I'm not saying that just about Republicans. I'm saying you hold your Democratic candidates accountable if they're not doing the right thing by civil rights, by <clears throat> the rights of women and pregnant people. You damn well do something about it. And as for these people, you know, just I guess, you know, they're so offended by the vulgarity, by everything. So remember, somewhere along the way, Tell a right-winger, fuck you today. Anyway, that was it for a little bit of a long-winded episode of The Trans Atheist with Ariane, your host. Please make sure you're leaving comments if you have an idea. If you'd like to hear something in the future, have an idea for a future podcast, subject matter, I'll have more coming very soon. I have a list of things I want to cover, but I'm always interested in what you are actually interested in. So, hopefully we can expand this as we go. Maybe I can get some other people to come and join in in the podcast and have discussions. I would really love to do that. Right now, we're not there yet. We're building. But I appreciate all you that are listening to help us build. You know, as we work towards a better society, as we work towards getting a message out there that, number one, you don't have to be a Christian to be moral to care about other people, to care about equality. You don't have to be a Christian. You don't have to be straight. You don't have to be cis to be a good human being. As a matter of fact, a large portion of times, the Christianity seems to get in the way of doing that. So anyway, thanks again. In the wise words of Kesha, don't let the bastards get you down. Lots of love from mine and my, you know, my family to yours. And I'll see you at the next podcast. Or at least, you know, you'll hear me at the next podcast. See you guys. Bye-bye.